Hey guys, hope you guys are having a wonderful day. We're gonna be talking about something that everyone is likely gonna talk about really soon. I wanna hop on this as soon as possible. One of the best movies I've seen, actually the best movie I've seen this year, and one of the best Marvel movies I've seen since No Way Home, honestly, Deadpool and Wolverine. Uh, we're gonna be talking about this movie. My initial opinions, I literally just got out of the movie theater and I'm uploading this tomorrow, which is Friday which is today, but uh, I actually watched it opening day. And beginning of this video will be spoiler free and I'll have a spoiler warning for those of you who have seen it. Um, and if you haven't seen it, you know, this part is fine and I will let you guys know when to stop watching. I'll probably put a timestamp too. Um, and if you guys haven't seen this movie yet and you're watching my video, go ahead and just go watch the movie. Like go, go buy some tickets. I don't care how much it is. Actually, movie tickets are pretty ridiculous right now, but still. This movie is actually worth it for once. Um, again, I'm going to reiterate, this is the first Marvel movie since No Way Home that actually made me feel like it was worth watching and paying to go to a movie theater for. Um, I cannot commend this movie enough. Again, we're going to try to be spoiler free. This movie does so many things right, and Marvel really went like quadruple all in down on this movie. And I'm really glad that they took a creative standpoint where they let Ryan Reynolds write and also be free with all all his jokes apparently kevin feige also went on talking about how they gave him full creative control um there is no limitations on jokes and you will definitely see the no limitations in this movie um god man they did so many things right thank fucking god because if, it's no surprise that marvel right now really needed this because they are in the shitter bro this movie's gonna make uh upwards to a billion for sure easily i mean the budget was ridiculous if you see some of the scenes you're like how the hell did they pay for all this I actually just searched it up the budget is seeing this stuff everywhere you couldn't walk down the street to your local bakery without knowing that there's a Deadpool and Wolverine movie. I, fuck, dude, they they reached out to me, a small YouTuber, to have a collab. I don't know if you guys see this with Marvel, just on my Instagram channel. Uh, sorry, not channel, Instagram account, and that one in, in itself was already insane to think about. Um, but they were really going balls to the walls on this. Uh, yeah, so the movie needs to make at least four hundred million like this is insane ryan reynolds really encapsulates the role of deadpool i mean he's like he's gonna go on there with the mount rushmore's of being your character like where it blends in you can't tell if it's the character or the actor anymore it's ryan reynolds wolverine with hugh jackman shit and um i mean obviously iron man with uh robert downey jr i don't even know who the fourth one would be let me think about that one. Who could I not see playing? Could it be the Thor? I don't know. That's a, That one's tough. But uh, yeah, so the movie itself, brilliant, well-written, and it was actually fucking hilarious. I Not not Love and Thunder, try too hard to be funny funny, because that movie was insufferable, but it was actually funny. And I think because they had the IP of Deadpool, and Deadpool is a funny character, they they're allowed to not take it seriously. And these jokes, you can tell they weren't written with like Disney people. I'm sorry to Disney. Actually, I'm not sorry. You guys suck. Um, you guys have the worst writers of all time. Thank God you gave it to Ryan Reynolds because he wrote some goofy jokes. And shout out to Hugh for, you know, reprising this role. Uh, apparently, it was actually partly Hugh's idea to to reprise this. And um, I, I think I read on a interview that he was talking about how he actually came up with this, like, I, idea and how it could work together. Well, they're they good friends, Hugh and um, Ryan Reynolds. But he had already announced his retirement. And so it, it took, I think it was like six years for this to be in the making. But uh, movie was amazing. It, you guys got to go watch it. I, I, it's hard for me to talk about anything without spoilers, but here is your guys' little spoiler warning because here we go. We're going to dive into some details. Holy fucking shit. And I'm going to try to not talk too loud because I have roommates that have not seen it yet and they're going to be watching it when this video comes out. The cameos were what the fuck. I was not expecting Marvel, Disney to really go balls to the walls with this, man. I literally just walked by to my roommates to tell them to turn up the TV because I don't want them to hear any of these spoilers. This movie should not be spoiled because the amount of fucking surprise cameos that they had and like it was Deadpool and I'm going to title this video somewhere along these lines like Deadpool killed the Fox universe and the Fox Studios because for good reason. I mean now the IP and that of uh, X-Men and or all the mutants and so forth is bought out by Disney. Um, this was kind of the final 
Shara of Fox. And man, did they do it so much justice. They brought in fucking Blade, bro. Wesley Snipes. Um, they brought in so many amazing, amazing Fox Studio like OGs. They even alluded to a lot of like low key cuts if you have to really be deep into the Fox universe to really know. And like that of the failed Gambit movie, they were going to originally cast Channing Tatum. <laughs> they fucking. Also, Channing, bro bodied his fucking role probably the funniest character outside of the main main characters um a great villain with that of uh charles charles xavier's uh twin sister i thought that was amazing um great way to tie in the tva too and i loved i loved how deadpool was used as a launching off point for the future of marvel and you know it is now in the hands of Kevin Feige, Marvel, and Disney to fix this fucking dumpster fire that they have. Thank God they had Deadpool, who made fun of the fact that Disney was in the shitter. They made fun, like in the movie, they were just constantly ripping on them. They even talked about how stupid the goddamn multiverse is, which at first it was a great idea. It worked out in this movie, but in like the long haul, it was just a terrible idea overall. Thank God they alluded to that. And now I'm really curious what they're going to do with Captain America 4. Will they go back to the Disney shit or will they actually move on? I'm glad that this movie was also rated R because if it wasn't rated R, it would not have done well, I think. I mean, like the jokes, most of the jokes didn't, wouldn't work in a PG-13. They had a joke about pegging, bro. And then they made a joke about how Disney producers wouldn't know what pegging was which is funny because kevin feige actually did talk about that and how he had to explain what pegging was to some of the execs um insane uh the movie is brilliant even the parts that were serious felt serious there were only a few but they were very serious moments and i think that's what love and thunder did wrong uh with thor it, it just it was too try hard at being goofy that the serious moments didn't hit where this movie knew it was goofy didn't try too hard it was just doing what it was doing and then the moments that it was serious it was really serious and um i loved it i loved every moment i loved the fourth wall breaking they really tied it in without doing overdoing it um this movie is i i mean initial reaction this is gonna be my best deadpool movie and that says a lot because deadpool one is in my top 10 of marvel so this makes this top 10 i'm gonna let it i'm gonna sit on this and marinate a little bit more before i really like finalize that thought but initial watching there's just so much fan service bro bringing in when they went to the fucking void and like brought in all those og and then referenced mad max furiosa which is also funny they also had a giant like of uh, 20th century fox studio which is awesome um what a callback for all of the millennials and i guess like the older gen z's um yeah they they, they fucking brought in everyone's saber tooth they brought in fucking uh electra which is like such a classic dude and whoever you know all the writers of this i think there's four or five main writers obviously there's a bunch of a whole fucking team they really did their work with even the little jokes i mean if you didn't watch fox growing up like fox um not fox sorry uh yeah yeah fox studios um early hero movies with like blade and all that you still would love this movie and understand all the big name references and also jokes like they 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 put in modern day slang which was just so goofy i'm trying to remember right now but i can't remember the exact thing that wade said but um they also referenced a lot of you know the disney where they're at right now marvel studios easy easy references to get but then there was a lot of just little fucking bangers bro x23 rolling up um we had little jokes about all the deadpools and multiverse like it was just absolutely well written in terms of a movie as a whole i think this is one of the i'm gonna say top 10 written marvel movies for sure i mean the jokes just fucking actually slapped i haven't seen a marvel movie that was actually that funny in a while no way home was funny but i think they outshined more with the actual plot where this one was plot and also their jokes like god channing tatum's little dialect coach part bro that shit fucking had me rolling i think my whole friend group was just dying for a while um what else was amazing? God, there was just so many good parts. Oh, they even referenced a lot of real life things going on, like how uh, <laughs> they gave Hugh Jackman or Wolverine enough 
of a bag he would do this movie and he did and you know they also made a joke about his divorce which is going on in real life uh they also had just little things that just perfected it i mean they had uh the greatest showman one of the songs which hugh jackman was in and sang uh, in the movie and god the honda odyssey joke man they just ripped on honda odysseys man and then they, they they did a callback to it too and action scenes like you know it's crazy i talked about all the jokes i talked about the humor the writing the actors the cameos and i haven't even gotten to probably the best if not one of the top two or three best things about the movie the action scenes man whoever choreograph choreographed and directed this fucking body that bro like top god five action scenes in this movie uh i mean top top action scene in this movie can be in a top five of all marvel that's what i meant to say i know like the elevator scene with um captain fighting was a big deal but there was a car scene in this where uh, you know wade and logan fight and that oh, that one was fucking brilliant they also i think one of the most under spoken about scenes was uh the hundred deadpools fighting and it was just one pan shot across the whole thing i always love when movies do that and action scenes i think a lot of kung fu movies used to do that which was really nice to reference in that um god it was just so cool so many references and easter eggs it was such a fan service movie and yet they did it in a way where the average joe who's never seen marvel really like that like they just know the bigger picture of marvel they would love this movie god brilliant amazing absolutely phenomenal they even made a furiosa joke bro about the head of the queen oh so funny um yeah if i were to give this movie a number score i'm gonna initial score i'm gonna give it a 90 I'll give it a 92 i'll give it a 92 out of 100 for rotten tomato um I, who knows if time passed i might go up or down but it, it, it's definitely one of my favorite marvel movies now and they really did the character of Wolverine, the character of Deadpool, and also Fox Studios justice because, you know, Fox is going to be done after this. Like, one thing I have to call, this is a major spoiler. I mean, all this has been major spoilers, but the fucking Chris Evans being not Cap, nope, but Human Torch, bro. That was already like, I was like, what the fuck? This is amazing. Ugh. Great, great, great movie. If you guys have not seen the movie, go ahead and watch it. It's out right now. Fucking figure it out. Um, yeah, you can wait till it goes into streaming, but I don't advise that because it's going to be spoiled for you. And was sitting in the movie and actually watching was absolutely one of the best experiences in a while in terms of movie. Um, I, mean, I guess the last good movie I've watched in theaters was uh, Iron Claw with Zac Efron. But yeah, phenomenal movie. Phenomenal everything. I really hope Marvel does well with this you guys have a great kicking off point with this please finish out strong and don't go back to the old ways of not i mean go back to the og ways but don't go to that little middle multiverse bs shit y'all been doing yeah uh, i have a little bit more hope for marvel uh, i don't have the highest hopes because they have been just dog water before this but we'll see where everything goes let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below about deadpool and wolverine and about everything else going on in the marvel world and yeah I'll see you guys next time.